name's John Perkins. I work at, I'm a volunteer at the Lancaster Tramway Museum. It's a museum that goes back about 10 years. It's not an old museum, but the story it, it covers, that's the story of Launceston's tramway past, goes back to 1911. Well, actually it goes a, a little bit further than that to 1895 when the council built a power station at Duck Ridge. And with the power from that uh, the power station, electric lighting came to Launceston. And some people thought, why can't we have electric trams as well? And uh, that took 15 years for the council to finally get up and running, and we celebrate it today in our collection. So, 1911 was the, was the year, uh, August was the month, and Launceston had trams. Uh, the tramway lasted till 1952 when trolley buses came to replace the trams and they in turn uh, disappeared in the 1960s when uh, buses took over. The tram fleet was very popular in its day. It provided uh, fast, efficient, silent transport for the people of Launceston. Uh, this is the Lonsons uh, um, Tashrao uh, regional turntable here in Launceston. Uh, it was last used in, in about, about the mid 80s uh, because they wanted to upgrade their facilities. They've sort of now over in Houston now, not far from here. But a bigger facility, much more cleaner. This area here um, was used back in the 1900s or a bit before that. And uh, you've got 47 bays here. If you see right the way around here, all the, all the grey stripes, the 47 bays right the way around. And, uh, the, and they used to use all their uh, repair or maintain their vehicle, all their steam engines and locomotives and other things they need to use over behind that was the, um, not there now, it was the old, uh, the workmen's, um, uh, but you call them trolleys or cars, they used to have the cabin, cabin, cabin things in. And uh, so the, the, the uh, turntable will hold about 150 tonne loco, that's the old scale, which is probably about an M4 or M6, the big stuff. Uh, how about one? How about's got one down there? Uh, Don's got one, which you've probably seen anyway. But it's not used at the moment. It's, it's not safe to use. The local museum owns it. We're trying to get the use of it, uh, but it's a little bit unsafe to use um, for, for general use because it's because the motors have been dis dis uh, disconnected. It can be operated by using your feet, but it's got, it's got, it's got a row of fan belts on one end of it and or both ends, and you could you could walk, walk on it and make double turn, but very very slowly. Um, do have problem, problems with vandals from time to time, they want to get in there and run, run muck, so we put the gates on there to keep, keep, them, keep them from going in there. The, if you see the building behind you here, um, the, that, that was meant to go right the way around, 
uh, but um, because of money funding, they, they, they didn't went that far. The original idea was to continue right the way around with what you see over here. They have 47 boats right the way around, and you've got a 40, 45 foot uh, turntable to be able to take the big locomotives. Um, the Don had one, they hadn't got one down, down, down the coast, they have got one in Hobart, it's about the only ones I know of. Oh, they got one, they, they, if they haven't got turntables, they've got, um, uh, they've got what we call um, uh, loops, which they can drive into then, and uh, move around that way, which is pretty good. Yeah. Have okay. you got any wires here? We can turn the locus? Uh, the, there's a wire over here that the, um, you can't see it because you're too low down. Yeah. Yeah, there's a wire here, but we can't use that because that that's belongs, belongs, belongs to the test rail, okay. which is good. So we can't, it, technically, uh, on paper, we could run the tram from here to Hobart, but because of little litigation, and I think we can't do it, we're not allowed to do that. Because the, 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 the authorities would jump, jump up and down and say, what are you doing that for? Right, this is, uh, this is a story of number one. Number one, uh, when uh, the trams finished in 1952, uh, all trams were sold off to, uh, for various things, for holiday shacks or sh uh, farm sheds. And in this case, uh, Max Collins was living in this in 1953. Then it went to another uh, part of Be near Beaconsfield. Uh, went from Beaconsfield to Flowery Gully to Royal George, all different parts of Tasmania. Uh, as com accommodation for older people. Uh, then there was a, um, a gentleman from uh, uh, Canberra that had a uh, motel there, and this motel was made up of uh, old tram cars from around Australia, and he uses them for accommodation as well as for restaurants, and it was, it's rather a, a unique and great complex. So he saw a number one at Beaconsfield, and thought, and that was the condition it was in, he thought we'd use that, but then he sent it to Canberra, and here it is in Canberra, under canvas for 17 years, deteriorating further, 